So the REDUCE-IT trial was a large randomized trial in approximately 8,000 patients with either secondary prevention or high-risk primary prevention, all patients on statins and all patients with elevated triglycerides equal to or above 135 but less than 500. And it tested EPA, a, a purified formulation of omega-3 fatty acids, icosapentaethyl, uh, for the prevention of cardiovascular events long term. Now what is particular in this trial, a number of features are specific to this trial. First of all, we used a high dose of EPA, four grams, far more than has been used in the past in, in the many previous trials of omega-3 fatty acids and twice as much or a little more than twice as much as was used in the JELIS Japanese trial. The second feature is the, the patients all had elevated triglycerides. Now with follow-up what we found was, and if this was largely unexpected truly, we found a 25 percent reduction in the primary composite outcome of cardiovascular events. And when we look at the key secondary outcome of CVD, SMI, and stroke, which is the conventional hard outcome used by most cardiology trials, there was also a 25% reduction. In addition, there was a 20% reduction in cardiovascular mortality. So these are major treatment effects associated with highly statistically significant and associated with very low numbers needed to treat and large absolute reductions in high-risk populations. Now, in terms of safety, the drug was reasonably safe. There was a statistically significant increase in an incidence of atrial fibrillation or atrial, atrial flutter by approximately 2%. There was a borderline increase in bleeding, and we know that omega-3 fatty acids are associated with uh, decreased viscosity and potential platelet uh, effects. Uh, and there were some modest differences in other side effects of lesser importance. So the overall result is a dramatic reduction in cardiovascular events for a treatment that has the potential to really be widely used in practice because it's not very expensive, it's reasonably easy to use and to take. And I would like to point out that this is, this is a surprise because Recently, there was a meta-analysis that looked at all of the trials of omega-3 fatty acids, and most of the trials have been negative. However, most of the trials were done in lower-risk patient population at much lower doses, not with the purified EPA that was used in this trial. The only exception to that rule was the Japanese JELIS trial, which actually was positive and found a 19% reduction, not inconsistent with our own findings. So there are two trials at high doses of omega-3 fatty acids, with fairly similar preparations that were positive, and the rest of the trials used one gram or less of non-purified preparations and were negative. So I think we have some understanding that maybe dose might be critical. A Couple of other comments. Triglycerides, we selected proposedly patients with elevated triglycerides, but in the end it doesn't seem to matter because when we look at the treatment effect as a function of baseline triglycerides, the results are the same and there's neither any interaction with achieved triglyceride levels after a year doesn't seem to impact results. So it's probably not about triglycerides. And actually it raises the question of how does this work? And to be really fair, we don't really know. There are myriad hypotheses about benefits of omega-3 fatty acids. And with the current data we have at this stage, we're not fully sure of how it works. But what is clear is that there is unambiguous cardiovascular benefit.